Here it is once again we have come to study the Word of God. And I thank you for joining, either by Facebook or just by listening. We thank you and glad to have you today. Amen. Let us pray. Holy, gracious God, Father, we thank you for another day for your mercy and grace. Grace and mercy has endured over us, O oh God. And Father, we just thank you that uh, we have come to learn more about your word, O oh God, and that our minds and hearts will be receptive to your word. Father, we thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we are still in the book of Deuteronomy. And last week, Pastor Roland uh, did some study on Deuteronomy, I think, 8. And now we're going over to Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. And we're still talking about, in a sense, the children of Israel coming on one accord and being obedient to the laws of God. So in 28, it's, we're talking about the blessings of God. So God tells the children of Israel, if you do this, if you be obedient to my commandments, then I will do this. And we see there's a condition. If they do this, then God will do this. Then ultimately, he tells them, if you don't obey my commandments, then I will do this. And we will uh, see as we go deeper into chapter 28. So chapter 28, the blessings. Verse 1, And it shall come to pass, if you shall hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command you this day, that the Lord your God will set you on high above all nations of the earth. So this is what God tells them. If you obey my commandments, do all that I tell you to do, you will be blessed above all nations. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? He ain't changed. If you obey his commandments today, under the new covenant, amen, you will be blessed above others. You will find favor. He will find favor uh, in you. Amen. Because you are obeying what he said to obey. Verse 2. And all the blessings shall come on you and overtake you if you shall hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. So God is saying if you hear my voice, if you do what I say, blessings will run you down. You won't have to find a blessing. The blessing will find you. Amen. And, and this is true. And just just try God and see. He ain't changed. He's the same God yesterday, today and forever. Verse three, blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, mean to bear children and the fruit of your ground, mean to uh, plant crops to uh, their crops will increase and the fruit of your cattle the increase of your kind and the flocks of your sheep so everything will be he tells them everything will be uh, increased everything will be fruitful from having children to the crops that you grow even the cattle that you own everything will be increased if you do this if you obey my commandments. Verse 6, verse 5. Blessed shall be the basket and your store. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. No limit. No limit to blessings. Everything that they need, God will supply it to them. Not, their, uh, not that they're uh, losing sleep, so to speak. 
in trying to accomplish, uh, to get these blessings from God. They will be automatic only if they obey the word of God. Verse 7, the Lord shall cause your enemies who rise up against you to smite, to be smitten before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. So uh, uh, God tells them, don't worry about your battles. When you come against your enemies, I will fight for you. They'll come at you uh, like they're going to overtake you. But when I intervene, amen, they'll flee all kinds of ways out of your presence. If your enemies rise up against you, if you obey. Verse 8, the Lord shall command the blessing upon you in the storehouses and in all that you set your hand unto. And he shall bless you in the land which the Lord your God gives you. Verse 9, the Lord shall establish you in holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto you. If you shall, here it is, keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. Verse 10, and all people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you. Now that should ring a bell to us. We should be, as children of God, that people should know that we are called by God. Not that they should be afraid of us, but they should see the light in us. Can we, can we say that? Can we say that other folk know that we are children of God? Think about that. Do we have the appearance of godliness? Or do we, you know, have the appearance when it's church time, but all through the week we don't have that godliness? Hmm. We should have that light. We should, people should know that we are children of God. Why? Because we won't indulge in the same thing that they indulge in. Our uh, thinking change, our speaking change, the way we act toward our fellow brothers and sisters change because it changed to love. And if they do uh, something that's don't exactly set right with you, you're still supposed to show that godliness in you. Still have the love for them. Don't just turn them away because they came up against you some kind of way. So that should give us a, should ring a, ring a bell there. Do we have the, do other folk know that we are children of the Lord? Verse 11, and the Lord shall make you plentiful in goods, in the fruit of your body, and in the fruit of your cattle, and in the fruit of your ground in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. Verse 12, the Lord shall open unto you his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto your land in his season, and to bless all the work of your hand, and you shall lend unto many nations, and you shall not borrow. That, that should ring a bell there to us too. Are we lenders or borrowers? He says right there, he would make it, if they obey him, he will, they shall lend unto many nations and shall not borrow. And if we look at it in the, uh, in the money aspect, are we living a life of borrowing? Or are we working on lending? Hmm, think about that one. And uh, a lot of times how we become borrowers is that we get stuff that we don't need. Come on, somebody. We get stuff that we don't need instead of stuff that we
in a sense, need. In other words, we want it, but don't need it. And now we find ourselves being borrowers instead of lenders. We should be working on as children of God. Uh, other folks should be, we should be lending to other folks, giving other folks things that they need, that things that they need. Things that they come and ask you for. And not just money. We could be lenders of strong faith. Amen. It's just not material things. If we have a strong faith, we can lend that to anybody. Amen. To try to encourage them. But we should be working and living uh, a life of being a lender amen and in, in all aspects from how you live your life from how you uh, uh conduct yourself we should be a lenders amen verse 13 and the lord shall make you the head and not the tail and you shall be above only and you shall not be beneath if that you listen to this if that you hear unto the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you this day to observe and to do them so Moses is telling them to observe and to do them that's the only way they will uh, 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 get an increase that's the only way they will be fruitful and when God gives you a blessing nobody can take that from you when he gives you a, a blessing and you won't have to, when he blesses you and he know what you, uh, know what you need, you don't have to lose sleep in trying to accomplish things on your own. Because if you feel that you accomplish whatever you got on your own, then it, it'll never be satisfying. You always want more. Or you always try to get more. Because you figure you've done it on your own. But when it's a blessing from God. Oh, he, 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 he figured it out before you can figure it out. He figured it out where you won't have to figure it out. Amen. And he puts everything in place. He has everything in place. But you can reap these blessings only if you do what he says. Amen. He he why worry what you're gonna eat? And the word says says this. Why worry what you're gonna wear, what you're gonna eat? Why why worry about that when God already knows? Just be obedient. And you know, uh we know God is our uh supplier. He gives us He can give us anything that we want. Amen. But it seems that we have in this day and time uh, the prosperity preachers that says, oh, you know, the word of God says, you know, that he'll give you this. He can give you that. And their whole concentration is on, in a sense, material things. Whole conversation is on prosperity. But that still doesn't take away uh, is an excuse. Yes, God can do this, but that still isn't isn't an excuse to not preach the gospel. The gospel is not prosperity. We shouldn't go away from the gospel being preached. If we preach the gospel, prosperity will come. We don't have to preach pro pro prosperity. We don't have to preach that. God said, preach the gospel. And the gospel is what? The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And through him, all things are afforded to us. So why some prosperity preachers waste time preaching about prosperity? Why? Because they, they want some of it. They want the people to give, give, give. Why not preach 
continue to preach the gospel. And God will provide. Amen. So don't get caught up in this prosperity gospel. If they, they are not, well, prosperity preaching. And if they are not preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, then something is wrong. Verse 14. And you shall not go aside from any of the words which I command you this day to the right hand or to the left hand to go after other gods to serve them. God tells them right there, don't go after other gods. And if we, God said, love him with all your heart, mind, and soul. When he talks about the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20. And then he said the second one, the second commandment, that uh, this one is just like, is like unto the first one. Love your neighbor as yourself. So if we love God and we love our neighbor, man, love, boy, it covers a whole multitude of sin, don't it? So if we love our brother or not our sister, we won't uh, covet. We won't uh, make false accusations against them. We won't lie on them. Amen. We won't uh, uh, say things that uh, hurt them. So, so, so when we love, it covers a whole multitude of sin. And when you love, Man, you're, you're, you're being obedient, especially when you love God. You're being obedient to him because you're willing to do what he says because of his love. Hmm. And, and it's easy now. See, back then, Israel had to try to keep the, the laws. Not that they could fulfill them. No, because Christ came and did that. But being obedient to him to see that okay I know goats and bulls won't can't save my my soul I know Christ is coming one day but he made the new covenant better and Paul says that he made a better covenant in Hebrews 8 6 he said he made a better covenant that's better than the old. Why? Because in a new covenant, we depend on Christ. He died for our sins, but the old covenant, we couldn't, we couldn't fulfill it. That's why they had to have goats and bulls. Morning, Pastor. So the new covenant, Paul says, is a better covenant. Verse 15, chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if you will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, statutes which I command you this day, that all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. Ooh. So now God says, if, I, if you do this, you have all these blessings. But now he says, if you don't do this, curses will come and you will never, you would endure these curses until you perish. And, and a lot of, you know, God takes pride in blessings. He takes pride in blessings. He loved to bless. And ultimately he loved to curse too. Get out the evilness. He takes yeah, he, 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 he does that too. So, because cause when, when somebody, just like the people of Israel, when uh, 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 the evil ones came up against them, did, didn't God fight off the evilness for them? So he says, now, if a condition, if you do this, I will bless you. You have all the blessings. You ain't got to worry about nothing. But now he says, if you don't do this, curses shall be upon you. Verse 16, curse shall you be in the city and curse shall you be 
in the field. Now, 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 now God is going to go back through all what he said that you would be blessed, what the people of Israel would be blessed for. Now he goes and tell them the same thing, the same thing he said they would be blessed, the same thing that they would be cursed by, that they won't prosper. So now he goes through the same thing. Verse 17, curse shall you be, shall be your basket and your store. The storehouses will be empty. Nothing stored in it. Amen. They ain't got, won't have nothing to put in it. Verse 18. Curse shall be the fruit of your body. Means uh, barren kids. And the fruit of your land. Uh, 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 growing crops. The increase of your kind. And the flocks of your sheep. So now from barren children. To the cattle in the field. It won't be. It'll be a curse. It won't be an increase. 19 curse shall be when you come in and curse shall be when you go out nothing that is done will stop it if god blesses you nobody can stop it if he curses you nobody can stop it why because he's the almighty god amen verse 20 the lord shall send upon you cursing vexation and rebuke and all that you set your hand unto for to do until you be destroyed and until you perish quickly because of the wickedness of your doings whereby you have forsaken me now imagine that everything that you put your hand to do everything that you attempted to do it won't it just it won't work it's cursed and it would seem like the people of Israel and us too today, if things continue to be upside and just not going right, I know somewhere some uh, uh, a thought will come to you why this is happening to me. But you know, some, some folk go through that and still don't call on the name of the Lord. Still don't call on it. Still don't ask God, God, why is this happening to me? And I know if you ask him, he'll tell you why it's happening. He'll tell you why it's happening. He told the people of Israel when they, you know, sinned. He told them why, well, what it was from. Their disobedience. So if things uh, are coming up against you and you, uh, you know, the blessings is not coming and you wonder why. Call on the Lord. Call on the Lord. Verse 21. The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto you until he has consumed you from off the land where you go to possess it. <clears throat> Sickness. Sickness will be rampant. Sickness won't, won't leave. And then we all know God is the controller of sickness. Now, yeah, he blessed the doctors uh, to have the knowledge to uh, whenever you go to the doctor, what, what you know, forever, I mean, what uh, for, he still guides the hands of the doctors. And it's still God's choice to heal you or don't heal you. Amen. It's, 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 it's still his choice because he still has control. Amen. And he might just want you to stay there a little bit longer just to call on him or develop some strong faith. Amen. But God still has control. Verse 22, the Lord shall smite you with the consumption and with the fever and with an, an inflammation. And with an extreme burning, <clears throat> and with the sword, and with blasting, and with mildew, and they shall pursue you until you perish. The word says, if, if the Lord is with us, who can be against us? Amen. Nobody. But just the opposite, if the Lord is against us, who, who going to be with us? <laughs> Amen. Who's going to be with us? So the whole thing here is, man, obeying what God says. 
And, 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 and we find it harder and harder in this day and time to obey. Obey God. We find it hard to obey God. And let, let me just pause there for a minute because, you know, uh, now nowadays uh, men and women are changing their appearance, are changing their um, sex, changing it. Because, and that's one way of being obedient to God. He made you for how he made you, for a reason. And folk taking it upon themselves to disfigure or change what how God made you, that's disobedient right there. That says, I have no regard for God. I don't care what, if he made me for a purpose of what I'm doing, what I want to do. But surely, surely how he made you from the beginning, out of your mother's womb, male or female, that's how you going to stand before him. Male or female in the, the you're doing with the uh, uh, changing and the disfiguring, that's going to be, that's going to go to the grave and it's going to stay there. But your spirit, <laughs> your soul, how he made you, that's how you're going to stand before him. Now, you got to give an account of why you did what you did. And, and you got to be, I, I want to say a thin line, but it's way beyond a thin line, man. If you, if, 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 if you, if you die in that, the Lord is the judge. The Lord is the judge. Because you wasn't obedient to how he made you for his purpose. You took it upon yourself, and, and, and you know what? Some, some people may say, oh, let, let them do what they want to do. Well, that's not what the word says. Because we are not our own. That's what it says. We are not our own. Hmm. Think about that. Verse 23. And your heaven that is over your head shall be brass. Meaning prayers won't be answered. And the earth that is under you shall be iron. Won't no crops yield. Isn't that something? Verse 24. The Lord shall make the rain of your land powder and dust. No rain. For heaven shall it come down upon you until you be destroyed. Going through all of this because of disobedience not hearing the word of god and going through all of this till you be destroyed until you perish that would be a and i and i always say this you know the what the world called the third world countries man it's it's i i, I always say look at what they believe in i mean that that just that just me because I bet if you look at what they believe in, over 80, and I'm just giving a number, 80, 85 percent don't even believe in Jesus. Don't, don't even believe him. And just like he said, if you don't obey me, I'll curse you. Curses will be upon you. And we can see in those countries that the curse is upon them. I mean, it's kind of bad to say, but it's, that's reality. That's the truth. That's the truth. From childbearing, children are born with the with the AIDS virus, isn't it? Am I right, Pastor? Children are born with the AIDS virus. Food is scarce. Have no running water. Come on, somebody. But 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 we have these uh, celebrities, you know, just so they could get a tax write off to give to these countries instead of telling them about the word of God. Like, uh, 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 giving you money ain't the problem. The problem is, what, what do you believe in? That's the problem. And that's, and curses are upon them. And just as that curses are upon them, curses are upon the United States too. 
Because what? They're going away uh, uh, from obeying God. And the curse that's coming up on the United States or the curse that's already in is this LGBT. I'm just going to say it. Because it's rampant more and more. More and more is coming about. That's the curse. And surely we know what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. So if the United States continue to uh, and religious uh, leaders, preachers, pastors continue to condone that. Think about what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. We're headed there and we know what happened. And we know what happened. Surely we don't hate the person, surely. But the conduct, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's sin. It's sin. Hmm. Verse 25. The Lord shall cause you to be smitten before your enemies. You shall go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them. See, see what he told them when he blessed them, that when they come up against them one way, they'll flee seven ways, meaning multiple ways they will flee from them. Now he says when they come up against you, you will be so afraid you will flee. Seven different ways, me multiple ways before them and shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. Now, we know when they got scattered. You, you remember when Titus, uh, he destroyed Jerusalem in 70 AD. And some, uh, some of the Jews, what, went back to Egypt. They went back. And they was back under the same oppression they was before Moses went and went and uh, told Pharaoh to let them go. They was under. They became slaves again. So, so this is what uh, God is saying, and 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 not not only that, a lot of uh, thousands of Jews was uh, sold as slaves. Sold as slaves, and and not only that. Many were put before in an arena, put before people and just slaughtered and just uh, 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 set on fire and let uh, dogs attack and all of this stuff before people as an amusement. All because they didn't obey God. Verse 26. And your carcass shall be meat unto all the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the earth. And no man, sh no man shall fray them away. The Lord will smite you with the botch of Egypt and with the emeralds and with the scab and with the itch whereof you cannot be healed. Oh. And if you ever, the em emeralds, that's if you ever heard of hemorrhoids. I ain't going to get into it or what it is. You can Google it and see, you know, what it's all about. But that's that's what he gave them. And they, no matter how much they tried to uh, uh, get rid of it, no matter how much they tried to uh, uh, try to cure it, they couldn't be healed. So that says right there that God is the controller of sickness. It ain't the doctor. It's not the doctor. Because sometimes you go to the doctor, he can do some stuff or tell you to do some stuff, even do surgery, and you still don't be healed. Amen? You still don't be healed. So it's, it's God. Verse 28. The Lord shall smite you with madness and blindness and astonishment of the heart, fear and insanity madness and blindness and then look at what verse 29 say and you shall grope at noonday as the blind gropes in darkness and you shall not prosper in your ways and you shall be only oppressed and spoiled evermore and no man shall save you so you're going to be blind in daylight you're going to be like a blind man groping trying to find his way and nobody will be able to save you. That just, and it would seem like, Pastor Roland, 
that these people would get it. So if God tells me, God tells me that all of this would happen to you if you disobey me. And if I if I'm listening and I'm hearing this, I'm thinking, man, I don't want to go through that. I don't want to go through it. But it seemed like they just wouldn't, they just wouldn't get it. And you, you uh, would think like, what is wrong with these people? But influence was one. They was influenced. They started serving other gods. The other gods, serving other gods made it seem like there was no need to serve the one and only true God. So the curses came upon them. Verse 30, you shall betroth a wife, meaning you shall be engaged to your wife, and another man shall lie with her. Even to that, even to that, you engage to a woman but somebody else sleeping with her. Isn't that, uh, oh. And it goes on to say, you shall build a house and you shall not dwell in it. You shall plant a vineyard and shall not gather the grapes thereof. Your labor will be in vain. Your labor will be in vain. Could, 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 could you imagine working all your days and you, uh, God uh, bless you enough to build a house. And that was it. You won't be able to live in it. Build it, but won't be able to live in it. That's like today, you build a house and all you could do is pass by. And somebody else is living in it. 31. Your ox shall be slain before your eyes and you shall not eat thereof. Your ass shall be violently taken away from before your face and shall not be restored to you. Your sheep shall be given unto your enemies, and you shall have none to rescue them. Without God, Israel is helpless. And that's what he's trying to tell them. Without me, Israel, y'all are helpless. You know, I call you to be my chosen people, and I want you to prosper. But in order for you to prosper, you have to obey what I say. And if you don't obey what I say, then I have to judge what you do. Because if God didn't, then he wouldn't be God. Amen. 32, your sons and your daughters shall be given unto another people, and your eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in your hand. Powerless. Sons and daughters given away, and you you're worried day and night about them, that you won't see them again. 33, the fruit of your land and all your labors shall a nation which you, which you know not eat up and you shall be only oppressed and crushed always. That ain't good. Being pressed and crushed always Till you be destroyed, till you die. That's 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 gotta be a that's gotta be a bad feeling. Thirty four. So that you shall be mad for the sight of your eyes, which you sh shall see. So now now now, since things ain't going right, there all they see is destruction. So they're angry. They're always mad. But well, it seemed like that would turn them around. Asking God, why, God, why is this happening to me? Which he told you, if you obey my commandments. Verse 35, the Lord shall smite you in the knees and in the legs with a sore botch that cannot be healed. From the sole of your foot until the top of your head. Man. Diseases. That he will smite you from the sole of your foot to the top of your head. 
36. The Lord shall bring you and your king which you shall set over you unto a nation which neither you nor your fathers have known. And there shall you serve other gods, wood and stone. We, 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 we know what happened there. We know when they was in Egypt. Amen. 37. And you shall become an astonishment, a proverb. And a byword among all nations where the Lord shall lead you. And we know Israel have become a proverb. They have become a proverb all through the word of God. It reference or goes back to Egypt. Amen. 38. You shall carry much seed out into the field and shall gather but little in. For the locusts shall consume it. And, and you know when 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 stuff just by this, if they you know they planted a lot, but they reap little, and the locusts came in and ate up the crops that they had. And that's the same if that happened today. And I'm talking in the sense of big farmers, the ones that don't know God. Oh, they are just take it as oh it's just you know we just got a locust problem this year. Man, that's it. We have to look to the Lord. Verse 39. You shall plant vineyards and dress them, but shall neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for the worms shall eat them. Worms eating everything up. Verse 40. You shall have olive trees throughout all your coasts, but you shall not anoint yourself with the oil. For the olive shall cast its fruit. I mean the olive tree will bring forth no fruit. So now you can't have the olive oil that you that's used in anointing. 41. You shall beget sons and daughters, but you shall not enjoy them. For they shall go into captivity, into slavery, stolen before your eyes. 42. All your trees and fruit of your land shall the locusts consume. The stranger that is within, you shall get up above you very high, and you shall come down very low. The strangers, the Gentiles. The Gentiles prospered. And the Israel Israelites didn't. And that's what that's what God meant when he chose Israel to be his chosen people. He chose them to be an example, to go out and 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 and, and spread the gospel. But they failed to do that. So now God had to had to call on the Gentiles, still get his word throughout the world. Forty four. He shall lend to you, and you shall not lend to him. He shall be the head, and you shall be the tail. Now, early he told them uh, uh, they shall be the uh, uh, lender and not the borrower. They should be the head and not the tail. But he says, when I bring the curse on you because you don't do what I say, then it'll be the opposite. They will. They shall lend to you, and you shall be the tail. Hmm. 45 more where all these curses shall come upon you and shall pursue you and overtake you till you be destroyed because you hearken not unto the voice of the Lord your God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded you sums it up right there Moses sums it up right there tell him all these curses shall come upon you because you didn't keep his commandments and his statutes. And they shall be upon you for a sign and for a wonder and upon your seed forever. 47, because you served not the Lord your God with joyfulness and with the gladness of heart for the, for the abundance of all things. Because you didn't, because you didn't 
uh, you serve not the Lord with glad with joyfulness and gladness of heart and abundance of all things. And that rings a bell to us again. Do we give the Lord thanks for what he's given us, what he's done in our lives? Do we come to him with joyfulness and say, thank you, God. Some stuff we didn't, that we got this good, we didn't even deserve it. Especially the main one, salvation. We didn't even deserve it. But we should say, thank you, Lord. Because I didn't, I didn't deserve it. I didn't even. And sometimes when we really, uh, 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 you know, trying to obey God and do do what he says. And we get some stuff and we were like, God, I didn't even know I was going to get that. Then other folk will get mad at you. Because he's blessing you. But the other folk shouldn't get mad. I mean, God's blessings just ain't for one individual. God's blessings is for anybody who obey that obeys him. Amen. Because he told the people of Israel, if you do this, I will bless you. He's an awesome God. Verse 48. Therefore, shall you serve your enemies, which the Lord shall send against you. In hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he would he shall put a yoke of iron upon your neck until he have destroyed you. The Lord shall bring a nation against you from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flies, a nation whose tongue you shall not understand. Fifty, a nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. He gonna bring a nation, he says here, a nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, old people, nor show favor to the young. So that, that goes back to those, 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 those countries, you know, that. We wonder if they really believe in Jesus Christ. Verse 51. And he shall eat the fruit of your cattle and the fruit of your land until you be destroyed. Which also shall not leave you either corn, wine, or oil, or the increase of your kind or flocks of your sheep until he have destroyed you completely. Complete destruction. Verse 52. And he shall besiege you in all your gates. Until your high and fence walls come down. Wherein you trusted. Throughout all your land. And he shall besiege you in all your gates. Throughout all your land. Which the Lord your God has given you. The city will be destroyed. The cities will be destroyed. And we all know that they were by the by the Babylonians. Amen. 53. And you shall eat the fruit of your own body. Now, 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 this is the part that. How can this be? Children of God, how can this be? And you shall. And you shall eat the fruit of your own body, the flesh of your sons and of your daughters, which the Lord your God has given you. In the siege and in the straightness wherewith your enemies shall distress you. So now Israel had, now they're scraping the bottom. Then resorted to cannibalism. Amen. They resorted to cannibalism in their sons and daughters. And you may say, well, preacher, that sounds like no humans can, can do that. Yes, they can. Let's let, let's go to Second Kings, Second uh, Kings six twenty eight. 
2 Kings 6, 28 and 29. And it says this, starting with 28. And the king said unto her, What ails you? And she answered, This woman said unto me, Give your son that we may eat him today, and we will eat your son tomorrow. 29. So we boiled my son and did eat him. And I said unto her on the next day, Give your son that we may eat him, and she has hid her son. See that? See, they were so, uh, that was like a, a sacrifice. But the woman reneged on it. She hid her son. You, 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 you go ahead and, and, and boil your son today and we'll eat him today and tomorrow we'll do my son. But she reneged. So th th this is just to say what they had resorted to. What they had resorted to, cannibalism? And you think to yourself, how could this be? How could you even imagine eating your own son or daughter? That just ain't, it just ain't, God didn't put that in us. The, 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 the Holy Spirit won't allow us to do that. But see, what the people of Israel thought, it was more, you know, behind it, then uh, 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 it was more behind it. I mean, they, they was going to uh, get more. They was going to be uh, 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 looked at in a better way if they did this sacrifice. It, 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 it makes no sense. But this is what they, this is what they had resorted to. Amen. Uh, verse 54 so that the man who is tender among you and very delicate his eyes shall be evil toward his brother and toward the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children which he shall leave the love from the family is gone there be uh, evil against the wife, evil against the children. And there will be just only hatred. Only hatred. And God tells them that all of this will come upon you. Nothing, absolutely nothing will work for you. Because I have this curse on you. And the only way you can get out of this curse, if you obey my commandments. 56, the tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness, her eye shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom and toward her son and toward her daughter. Even the wife going to be, have evilness toward husband and children. 57, and toward her young one who comes out from between her feet and toward her children which she shall bear for she shall eat them for want of all things secretly in the siege and straightness wherewith your her your enemy shall distress you in the gates man when we forsake god Despite the warnings he gives us, God will forsake us. He will forsake us. And it's not that he doesn't love us. It's just the sin that we're practicing or the sin that we're, we're indulged in. Amen. And, and I, I think what, the, what people don't get is that, is that God has to judge that. He has to. I mean, there's no, there's no way around it. He has to judge it. 58, if you will not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that you may fear this glorious and fearful name, 
the Lord your God. Then the Lord will make your plagues wonderful, and the plagues of your seed, even great plagues, and of long uh, continuance, and sore sicknesses, and of long continuance. Moreover, he will bring upon you all the diseases of Egypt, which you were afraid of, and they shall cleave unto you. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in this in the book of this law, then will the Lord bring upon you until you be destroyed. So there's going to be some plagues he didn't even mention that will come upon them. And Moses tells them all of this, that this is what is going to happen if y'all don't, don't obey him. 61. Also, every sickness and every plague in this book shall come upon you uh, until you be destroyed. 62. And you shall be left few in number, whereas you were as the stars of heaven for multitude, because you were not, you would not obey the voice of the Lord your God. And it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoiced over you to do good and to multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you. Amen. He rejoices when he blesses you. And he rejoices when he destroys you. Because it's the evilness that he's fighting. It's the evilness that he's uh, 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 trying to weed out. Amen. So that's why. So the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught. And you shall be plucked from off the land where you go to possess it. 64. And the Lord shall scatter you among all people from the, from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there you shall serve other gods which neither you nor your fathers have known. Even wood and stone. 65. And among these nations shall you find no ease. Neither shall the soul of your foot have rest. But the Lord shall give you there a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. And, and your life shall hang in doubt before you and you shall fear day and night and shall have none assurance of your life. Man, Moses, he's telling them, I just, I, I, they just wouldn't get it. Some of them just wouldn't get it. 67, in the morning you shall say, would God it were evening? And at evening you should say, would God it were morning? Things will be so bad. He was like, God, is it, is it morning yet? I can't, I can't take this. God, is it, is it evening yet? And fear, would you be, would they be all the days of their life? For the fear of your heart wherewith you shall fear. And for the sight of your eyes, which you shall see. All they will see is just plagues and fear. All they will see. 68. And the Lord shall bring you into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spoke unto you. You shall see it no more again. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. And that happened with Titus when he destroyed Jerusalem. And the whole thing here was we, that was the last verse in chapter 28, is that to find favor. For God to have favor on you. And I know by the grace of God, some things that happen to the unsaved is still by the blessings of God. But to have favor, God to have favor on his people, we have to be obedient. We have to obey the law for us, which is the new covenant. Now, don't, 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 don't get me mis, uh, uh, don't be misguided by the law. I mean, the new covenant. I'm not talking about the Mosaic law. 
I'm talking about the law, the new covenant law. Amen. Which Paul said it's easier. And it is. It's easier than the old covenant. It's easier than the law. But he's trying to get the people of Israel to be on one accord. To say, okay, I can, y'all can be a prosperous, prosperous nation if you just obey what I say. I mean, there's got to, you can't expect to get all these blessings and don't give nothing back. <laughs> I mean, that, 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 that just don't make sense. It, 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 it doesn't make sense. Can you expect to, uh, buy food and buy the things that you need if you don't work and get the money <laughs> you can't expect nobody just to give it to you amen now i know some good-hearted people will if you need they would you know give but you can't always depend on that because they might not always have it to give amen amen so so he's just telling them here my sisters and brothers that watch how i prosper you if you obey my commandments. And like, like I said earlier, love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And he says the second one is like unto the first one. Amen. Love your neighbor as yourself. And like I said, love covers a whole multitude of sin. Because if I can love my brother and sister, I won't sin against them. And that's obeying God. That's obeying God. Amen. You got anything, Pastor? So my brothers and sisters, obey God. Obey him. Do what he says. And how we get into sinning, is it something that we wanted to do because we wanted to do it? That's just the, that's just it. Because we wanted to do it. That caused us to get into or practice sin. So it's obedience. The blessings of God. And don't just do it for the blessings. Do it because you love him. Because we know we got some, you know, the preachers out there that preach this prosperity gospel as if that's all what the word is talking about but it's not the gospel if you continue to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ Christ dying buried and resurrection salvation then the rest will come the rest will come because God knows what you need and it's not, not always what you want he knows what you need. Amen. And just like he told the people of Israel, if they do this, if they obey my commandments, blessings will chase you down. And it's just not material blessings. It's blessings that he have given you a spiritual blessing, which is the main one that you can give to somebody else. Mm, that's the ultimate blessing. And once you got the word of God in here, nobody can take that away being obedient and if he can curse the children of Israel because they wasn't obedient he can curse us he can curse us and 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 if, if so happen uh you fall into you know a place where things ain't going so good then look back and say god am, am i being obedient to you and i know we go through seasons I know everybody go through seasons to, you know, strengthen their faith and, 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 and to get more uh, acquainted with God. But he, if it's constant, he won't leave you there. You're not going to stay, stay there. But if you find yourself staying there for a while, then I would ask God, God, am I, am I being obedient? God, what am I not doing? Because he promised blessings if you be obedient. Amen. Amen. We thank you for joining us. Uh, 
another lesson, another word from God that he wants us to be obedient to him. And it's not, it's not hard. We just got to have a made up mind. And once the Holy Spirit comes in, then it becomes a little bit easier. But we have to keep our focus and our mind and our thinking on God. And watch out the blessings come. Amen. Amen. Thank, Thank you, my brothers and sisters. Uh, another word from God. And go back through the scriptures we just read. Go back and read them again. And let it, let it set in of how the people of Israel continue to disobey God. After he told them all these things that would happen. And they still turned a deaf ear. We thank you and we love you and join us again next week as we continue to in, uh, dwell in God's word. Let us pray. Holy grace of God, Father, we thank you for your word, O oh God. And Lord, just give us the mindset, O oh God, that we can be obedient to your word. And Father, we ask you for strength. We ask you for patience, O oh God, as you continue to allow the Holy Spirit to dwell in us. Father, we thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen.